Hey everyone, good afternoon. Blitzball Champ is back bringing at you another pro wrestling talk episode here on the U to the Tube. Um, so today I'm going to talk about a couple of things. Uh, I'm going to talk about a talk about a little bit of stardom. I'm going to talk some New Japan pro wrestling. Uh, we just crowned a NJPW strong open weight champion uh last night so i'll get into that um i'll get into some aew i'll get into the usual wwe and i'm also going to uh do a preview of the upcoming impact wrestling rebellion pay-per-view since i'm actually going to be watching that so i'll do a preview of that um and just a couple of other things as well so um we're gonna we're gonna dig in dig into this today. We're going to start off with some stardom, uh, go over a little bit of stardom. Um, but yeah, let's get started. Um, so, you know, it's been mainly just a couple of, couple of shows that have happened, um, in, uh, Takasaki Gunma and also in, uh, Matsumoto as well. And just just going to touch up on a few things. Um, I was checking out the Mina Shirakawa versus Lady C um, match. And I have to say, that flying forearm from uh, Mina onto uh, Lady C, like, that was just about as good as uh, Kyrie Sane's flying Kabuki uh, forearm. Or even the phenomenal AJ Styles' uh, phenomenal forearm. Just that, of course, he does it off a of springboard. But I felt like the way Mina Shirakawa did that was just excellent. You know, more and more, as I see Mina Shirakawa wrestle, she's really been growing on me. Like, not only does she have the look, but she's got the she's got the skills in the ring. Definitely got the skills, and she's been improving. Um, Unagi Sayaka recently got a submission victory uh, for her team of her and... Uh, Tom Nakano over Rina and Konami. So, you know, I feel like we're getting doses of Unagi Sayaka really starting to, you know, get a get a couple of wins here and there. You know, whether it's um it's mostly in a tag team match, but every now and then it seems like she may, depending on who her opponent is, she'll get a singles victory. So so that's what's up. Um uh Shirty and Julia recently had a time limit draw with um, Momo Watanabe and Azumi. And because of that, um, Julia is actually up for defending the Goddess of Stardom tag team titles against uh, Momo and Azumi. Uh, we got to remember, actually, last year they won the Goddess of Stardom Tag League. So, um, so yeah, this should, be a, this should be a good match. I'm not sure when they're going to have that title match. But at least we know that's something we can look forward to. So, um, so yeah, looking forward to that. Um, Unaki Sayaka got a victory over um, Lady C with a nice frog splash. Um, uh, Fuki Ken Death, um, since she's been with Oedo Tai, you know, she's been getting a couple of victories um, for her team uh, lately in the matches that she's been in. So, um Definitely Fuki Ken Def still looking strong, even in Oedo Tai, which, you know, she's known for getting those those surprise roll-ups. You know, that's kind of her thing. But um but yeah, so looks like we're not gonna see any less of that, nor are we gonna see any less of Shuri getting submission victories. So um so mainly, you know, between these two shows the usual has been happening. So I mean, this is good. This is this is pretty cool. But um, overall, you know, just a couple of shows that have taken place. No, nothing, nothing too crazy. Um, unfortunately, uh, some really bad news came up um, in Japan. So, unfortunately, there was a state of emergency declared in um, some parts of Japan uh, due to the the pandemic, you know, due to the breakout. And um, these are the listed shows that they've had to cancel. 
Um, so they canceled the Osaka show on April 25th. Um, they canceled the... Well, actually, they canceled the th three Osaka shows, uh, one on the 25th, on May 8th, and on May 9th. Um, and unfortunately, they had to postpone uh, the rest of the Cinderella tournament, which was supposed to take place uh, next week on uh, April 30th. So um, the Cinderella tournament will conclude at a future date. They don't have one set yet, but at least we know that the tournament's not canceled, just postponed, that they're going to eventually finish the Cinderella tournament. So at least that's nice and reassuring. Um, they did list that they still are going to have the following shows um, at uh, May, uh, excuse me, April 24th at Hamamatsu, April 29th at Sendai, um, May 2nd at Hiroshima, and May 4th and 5th at Fukuoka. So those shows that I just named are still going to happen because there's no state of emergency in those, in those areas. But I'm really just hoping that... Um, that everything goes well. They got the Hamamatsu show going on currently, so um, I have to wait until that uh, spawns on Stardom World, since that's what I'm subscribed to. But um, but yeah, that's pretty much that's pretty much all that I have to uh, provide for Stardom. I do like how it stars. Um, you know, after some of the moves that they do, especially as a tag team, they're paying tribute to. Um, Saya Ida, the current future of Stardom champion, who's unfortunately out due to injury, but you know I see Hanan kind of doing the the chest beating before her pose, and just you know after certain moves, the whole group will beat their chest and then pose. So I like I like the I like the tribute to um, Saya Ida, and I just I hope she comes back soon. I really I don't know how how long she'll be out for, but I really hope she comes back soon. She's still. She's still a pretty big piece of the Stars uh, stable. So I know Hanan is back, but um, Saida is still a pretty big piece of the Stars stable. So hopefully, hopefully she'll be back uh, sooner sooner than um, expected. But um, that's all I have for Stardom for now. Um, gonna get into. The uh, New Japan Cup USA Finals, the conclusion that happened last night. Um, they had a they had a couple of matches. They had two matches before that that um, finals match. They had Clark Connors and TJP team up to take on Jr. Kratos and Chris Dickinson um, of Team Filthy, and um, Team Filthy was able to get the victory. Um, but it was a pretty, it was a pretty dang on good match. Um, you know, Clark Connors and TJP teaming up after, you know, recently Clark Connors had eliminated uh, TJP from the New Japan Cup USA tournament. So, thought that was pretty interesting. But this was a good match. This was a good match. But um, Jr. Kratos did get the victory for uh, Team Filthy. Um, we had Rocky Romero. In action going up against Wheeler Yuta. Um, I haven't seen a lot of Wheeler Yuta other than um, he was, if I remember correctly, he was in the Pure Rules ROH tournament that they had uh, a long while back that uh, Jonathan Gresham ended up winning. But I remember seeing Wheeler Yuta in that tournament. Um, but yeah, so this was actually, this was a good match as well. Um, of course, uh, one of the big things for Rocky Romero, he wants to become IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion, something that he's never done before. So um, that's one of his big dreams. And, you know, hopefully he'll eventually get the opportunity to do that. You know, I know Rocky Romero's kind of, Kind of getting up there in age, but can still go strong in the ring. And honestly, I would be cool with a Rocky Romero uh, IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship title run. Why not? Why not? Um, I was able to get the armbar submission 
uh, over Wheeler Yuta to get the victory. But um, it was definitely back and forth. Wheeler Yuta definitely showing some amazing skills in this match. I definitely will keep an eye out for him more. Dude, dude is pretty good. Dude is pretty good. I don't know how long he's been wrestling because you know I don't I don't know him that well. But dude is good. Dude is definitely good. And then we had the finals of the New Japan Cup USA. Oh, man. It came down to filthy Tom Lawler versus Brody King. And, uh, man, I really wanted Brody King to win this. I really did. But Tom Lawler got the victory. Wore down uh, Brody King quite a bit. And then eventually made him pass out to the rear naked choke. Um, it took a while. And I got to give give him props on the continued aggression. But man, I really wanted Brody King to win this. But Filthy Tom Lawler is your inaugural first ever strong open weight champion. Yeah. So congratulations to him. And... uh Hopefully, going forward, we'll see this title get defended quite a bit uh, on in NJPW Strong, which um, that's what I'm hoping. I think between that and the um, IWGP United States Championship gets defended uh, on this brand here in the in the U.S. quite a bit. So, um, of course, you know, um, John Moxley still holds that title. But, uh, yeah, still good match between these two. Really wanted Brody King to win, but didn't go that way. But, um, but yeah, so kudos to New Japan Pro Wrestling for another successful New Japan Cup USA and crowning of the first ever strong openweight champion, Filthy Tom Lawler. Okay, looking, looking at uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling, they got... Uh, they got a Wednesday and Thursday uh, show coming up. Uh, Wrestling Saitsuma no Kuni, um, April 28th and 29th um, in Kagoshima Arena. So I wanted to go over the match lineup for those two nights. Um, let's see. So for the first night on Wednesday, this coming Wednesday... Uh, we got Gabriel Kidd and Tiger Mask teaming up to go up against Yuyu Uemura and Yoda Suji. Uh, so we got some li uh, young lions in action. Uh, we got uh, a six-man tag. We got the um, Suzuki Guns, Doki, Zack Sabre Jr., and Taichi going up against Bullet Clubs, Jado, and the Gorillas of Destiny. Of course, Tangaloa Tamatanga. So that should be good. Um, we got another six-man tag match. Uh, we got Master Wado, Ryusuke Taguchi, and Hiroshi Tanahashi going up against, uh, Bullet Club's Gato, Taiji Shimori, and Yujiro Takahashi. So, two back-to-back, -back, uh, Bullet Club matches. Alrighty. Um, next we have a eight-man tag. We have, uh, LIJ's Bushi Sonata. Shingo Takaki and Tetsuya Naito going up against United Empire's um, Jeff Cobb, Aaron Hanare, The Great Okarn, and Will Ospreay. So, um, wow, that's that's a pretty loaded match right there. That should be excellent. Um, we got the KOPW 2021 uh, up for grabs in a YTR-style blindfold match. Um, aka a darkness match, where <laughs> where the the champ Toriyano will defend against Bullet Club's evil. Oh God, this should be this should be wacky. This should be pretty wacky. Um, I I don't see evil winning this because I mean Toriyano. But I mean, we'll we'll see. This this looks to be a wacky kind of match, so <laughs> this should be cool. All right, and then the main event we got uh, the IWGP 
Junior Heavyweight Tag Team titles on the line as Rapungi 3K makes their first defense against Yoshinobu Kanemaru and El Desperado. So uh, that should be a good match. Should be a really good match. Um, good to see Sho and Yo back together. And they'll have their first defense. So um, all this is night one of wrestling Satsuna, Satsuma no Kuni. And then we're going to go into night two, which is Thursday, which, you know, I'm going to be watching the NFL draft. So for Thursday, starting off with a tag team match, uh, the Young Lions, Yu Yu Umura and Yoda, Yoda Suji going up against LIJ's Bushi and Sonata, which I'm sure it's easy to pick how that's going to go. Um, next up, we got a six-man tag. We got Tiger Mask teaming up with Rapungi 3K, going up against uh, Suzuki Guns, Minoru Suzuki, y Yoshinobu Kanemaru, and El Desperado. So good to see Minoru Suzuki on the card. And then next up, we got uh, another six man tag. Uh, we got uh, Doki and Zack Sabre Jr. and Taichi, so more Suzuki Gun, going up against. Uh, Bullet Club's Jado and the Gorillas of Destiny. Uh, fourth match, we got an uh, eight man tag. We got Master, Master Wado, Ryusuke Taguchi, Toru Yano, and Hiro, Hiroyoshi Tenzan going up against Bullet Club's Dick Togo, Taiji Ishimori, Yujiro Takahashi, and Evil. It's a pretty loaded match there. Um. And then we got ourselves a special tag match. Um, we got Tetsuya Naito and Shingo Takaki of LIJ going up against United Empire's The Braid O'Karn and Will Ospreay. And then the main event is another special tag match where Hiroshi Tanahashi will team up with Kota Ibushi to go up against United Empire's Aaron Hanare and Jeff Cobb. Huh, I would think the the tag match before would probably be the main event. I mean, well, Osprey, you know, him being the IWGP heavyweight champ, but that's how they have the card here. So, yeah, but that's night two of um, wrestling uh, Saisuma no Kuni. So, looking at... Uh, the schedule we got that coming up and then uh monday may 3rd and tuesday may 4th will be wrestling dontaku so um we still got another week before that so i will go over that card um i'll go over that card next week so that should be good that should be really good but um that's all we got for new japan pro wrestling for now um, let's go into some AEW. So, um, had quite a good, good week with, uh, AEW. Um, we got to see Hangman Adam Page and Ricky Starks go at it. Um, Ricky Star, or er, excuse me, Hangman with a, with a submission victory. Not something that we usually see much from, um, Hangman Adam Page. Typically, it's usually a buckshot lariat into the cover, but nah, made uh, Ricky Starks tap out. And of course, um, Hook tried to get involved and Brian Cage, but then of course, you know, the Dark Order has Adam Page's back, so still going strong with that. I still do wonder though, when is Adam Page finally going to get his title shot? The dude's been ranked number one for a while now. So I don't know if they're going to save it for maybe um, double or nothing in May. But, I mean, when is he going to finally get his title shot? You know, against Kenny Omega. You know, he hasn't had that title shot yet. But what I'm thinking they're probably doing is they're going to take a bunch of time to rebuild that back up because you know of course there's a lot of history between Kenny Omega and Adam Page I mean they were 
you know, AEW tag team champions for a long time. And then when they lost, they split. And just there was some dissension. So it'd be good to see them kind of renew renew that. So they're probably going to take some time to build that. So I don't know if they'd be, be able to do that in time for Double or Nothing. Or they may wait until the, the show afterwards. But I do hope Hangman Adam Page does eventually get his title shot because he's been ranked one for a while for a good while so just something to keep in mind something to keep in mind um we had trent taking on uh penta el Ciero miro and of course uh that was back and forth for a while until of course um alex abrantes got involved and then you know Penta was able to hit the package pile driver, get the victory. So, um, <laughs> it'll be interesting to see uh, how this rivalry continues. I'm pretty sure we're going to get a stable showdown, you know, best friends versus Death Triangle. And that should be a good trios match. So, I, I, I'm looking forward to that. You know, maybe that's something, maybe that's something they should say for Double or Nothing. I, I think that'd be great. I think that'd be great. Um, and of course, both the Inner Circle and the Pinnacle got a chance, you know, to do their promos. Of course, Jim Ross interviewed the Pinnacle. And of course, the Inner Circle uh, got interviewed by Tony Schiavone. They did their thing. So it looks like we're going to have ourselves a big, stable showdown. At Blood and Guts, May 5th, between the Pinnacle and the Inner Circle. So, that should be great. That should be really great. Um, so, may the best stable win, pretty much. <laughs> but, um, oh yeah, we had the AEW Women's Championship match, um, which this was a great one. Um, Ty Conti took on the champ, Hikaru Shida, who, uh, according to this, has been champion for 333 days. Um, so at least, you know, it's looking like Shida is going to hit the one-year mark by the time Double or Nothing arrives. Um, of course, I like the show of respect. They bowed to each other um, as the match started. But uh, these ladies did great. And more and more, Ty Conti definitely is improving. I mean, she already, she pretty much has like the submission slash martial arts uh, advantage over Sheeta. But probably, I mean, maybe by a good amount. But we got to remember, Sheeta also took judo and kendo. So she has a martial arts background as well. Just that, you know, Ty Conti, you know, has the, the judo the uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, that's more, that's more where she has that advantage up over Sheeta. So, I mean, two ladies pretty, pretty much almost dead even, in a way. I mean, Sheeta might be the more experienced pro wrestler, but Ty Conti, this was a great matchup. This was a really great matchup. Um... Like I said, I wish these type of matches were at least 25 or more minutes. I mean, really give the ladies an opportunity to really showcase. And these are two great wrestlers. You know, Ty Conti has improved match after match after match. And I just really love what AEW has done with Ty Conti. You know, WWE could have done the same with her back in NXT, but... Didn't go that didn't go so well. But um I'm really hoping I hope someday Ty Conti becomes AEW women's champion. I think it can happen. I really do. I think she has the blueprint to eventually become a great champion. Um <clears throat> it just didn't happen in this match. Just did not happen in this match. Um that Sentine across Sheeta. Draped on the turnbuckle was pretty sick. And um, 
you know, both of these ladies were kicking out of everything. Um, and it took a while. It took a while, but Sheeta was able to get the, the katana, hit the katana on Ty Conti to get the pin, the one, two, three. But yeah, overall, excellent shot. Excellent match, I mean. But um, these two have great chemistry in the ring. And um, great strikers. And they really took it to the next level in this match. I just wish it could have been longer. And then, of course, after the match, um, Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, came out, showed the, the rankings. And, of course, because of Ty Conti's loss, bam, Britt Baker gets bumped to number one. Sheeta throws her kendo stick at her. So, um... <clears throat> I mean, let's let's be honest. Let's be for real. It's looking like Britt Baker is going to get her title shot at double or nothing. And of course, we know by that time, Hikaru Shida will have been, <clears throat> excuse me, will have been AEW Women's World Champion for a year. And I think it's safe to say that she is going to get dethroned at double or nothing. And and that and that's fine. You know, I think it's been Britt Baker's time. You know, she's pretty much the top uh female heel in the division on AEW in the women's division. So, you know, the title has been held by two faces and one heel so far. So, it looks like Britt Baker is indeed going to be that second heel women's champion and it makes sense it makes sense um my only thing that i hope will happen is that nyla rose at least gets a title shot versus Britt baker because Britt baker still has yet to pin or submit nyla rose keep that in mind she has not done that yet she hasn't done that yet you know, and, and Sheeta's beaten Nyla Rose three times. Nyla Rose three times. So, just something to keep in mind. I'm not saying that Britt Baker, you know, doesn't deserve to be champion, but keep that in mind. She never beat Nyla Rose, and Nyla Rose is a former champ. So, um, but yeah, that's what it's, this is looking like it's going to lead to. Britt Baker versus Sheeta at double or nothing. So, um, let's see. Miro did a promo, still no Kip Sabian. So, not sure what's going to happen with that, but whatever. Um, QT Marshall took on Billy Gunn. And while it seemed like Billy Gunn had the overall advantage in this match, Anthony Agogo comes in while the referee is distracted and hits Billy Gunn with a gut punch. A gut punch. QT hits the diamond cutter, gets the victory. Ugh. I just, I'm not liking this Anthony Agogo. I know he's a boxer, but come on now. Come on. One gut punch. Come on. Um, <laughs> and um, Dustin Rhodes came out with a, with a chair. And, of course, Nick Camarado was there as well. And he hit Nick with the wooden chair. And it pretty much didn't phase Nick Camarado. Like, the, the chair broke and he just stood there. Kind of flexed a little bit, and <laughs> that was quite a sequence. That was quite a sequence, which Nick Camarado pretty much looks like a beefed up Bruiser Brody. So, um, yeah, that doesn't that doesn't surprise me one bit. That just that was a pretty funny sequence. <clears throat> um, you had the Elite in their uh, private trailer, and then Eddie Kingston and. John Moxley show up in, I guess, like a 
a truck, almost the size of a monster truck, just a little bit smaller. Um, had a pipe, started destroying some of the uh, the trailer. They went inside. Nobody's in there. And um, yeah. Moxley and Kingston are not done with the Elite one bit, especially after what happened in the trios match with Moxley and the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega and the Good Brothers. So we are far from done. Far from done. Had a had another good match between Christian Cage and Powerhouse Hobbs. Um you know, Powerhouse Hobbs, you know, beat down Christian Cage the, the previous week. Um after Christian Cage declined the offer from Taz to join Team Taz. Uh but yeah, this was this was a good good match. Uh Christian doing what he does best. And, you know, this was a good match, especially for somebody like Will Hobbs going up against somebody like Christian, very well experienced. So this was this was good. This was really good. And, you know, I hope to see more of, of opportunities like this for some of the, the younger guys like Will Hobbs. So I could definitely dig this. Um, great match. Um, but... Christian Cage did get the kill switch on uh, Hobbs and got the victory. Um, but yeah, Christian Cage uh, still undefeated here on AEW. Um, showed more Jade Cardgill, but don't care, don't like her. Um, the main event was uh, the for the TNT title match. Uh, once again, Darby Alley. Darby, Darby Allen and another AEW Dynamite main event defending the TNT title against uh, Jurassic Express's Jungle Boy. And I have to say, I was excited for this match. I mean, two young guys going at it, and I just, I was really, really happy with this match. It was back and forth. Both wrestlers really got a chance to showcase. Like I said, I'm big on Jungle Boy. Very big on Jungle Boy. And um, these two in the ring, the chemistry was amazing. Um, a lot of high flying, a lot of um, um, technicality, and just just back and forth. Back and forth. But um, Darby Allen was able to uh, counter a sunset flip, turned it into the Last Supper pin to get the victory over Jungle Boy. But um but yeah, this was a great match. I mean, you had Darby Allen in the snare trap at least twice and was able to to break out of it. But um yeah, this was a very back and forth match and this was this was good for a main event. This was really good. Probably not one many would think of, but this was a good main event and these two did well. These two did very well. But Darby Allen, still your TNT champion. So, um, and of course, afterwards, uh, Ethan Page and Scorpio Sky run down for the attack. Then Lance Archer comes down to the aid of um, Darby Allen. Um, but then, of course, you got Sting. That's got the, the baseball bat. And, um, oh my goodness, I, I just, I don't like this tag team. Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page, I just, I don't like this tag team. I really don't. They need to be doing single stuff. But that's just me. That's just me. But, but yeah, that'll do it for, um, for AEW. All right, on to uh, WWE. I mean, starting with Raw. <laughs> so, got another another sneak attack from Mason T-Bar on Drew McIntyre. And, the, of course, the whole claim was they got nothing to do with the Hurt Business. But, I don't know. Um, 
Um, we once again saw the Viking Raiders and Shelton Benjamin and Cedric Alexander again, and the same outcome from the previous week again. The Viking Raiders with a victory after a Viking experience. So just like that, ever since Cedric and Shelton lost the Raw tag titles, they have now been reduced to catering jobbers. I mean, I'm all happy for the return of the Viking Raiders, but this is ridiculous. Like, once former tag champions reduced to catering jobbers again. They don't even get ring entrances anymore. Like, this is so ridiculous. So ridiculous. Um, of course, Charlotte Flair came out, did her promo. And then, of course, we got to see Rhea Ripley and Asuka as well, which Charlotte and Asuka had a match schedule, which I didn't know was going to be the main event. And, you know, ended up being the main event. Um, Charlotte got on the mic and uh, kept interrupting Asuka whenever she tried to get a word in. And then Asuka pretty much declared that she would defeat Charlotte and called her a bitch. So, yeah. I um, guess that was the big oh moment for Asuka. But, but yeah, I mean, I'll, and I'll get into what, what happened later. Um, ladies and gentlemen, Matt Riddle pinned Randy Orton clean. Let, let that, let that sink in. Matt Riddle defeated Randy Orton <clears throat> clean. Wow. An RKO reversal into a crucifix pin. And Riddle got the victory. Clean. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> um, of course we had the women's tag team champions Nia and Shayna in action against Naomi and Lana. Shayna pinned again. Of course, Mandy and Dana came out, showed the footage from Nia's slip. Off the ring apron. Nia got mad. Was going to go chase after Mandy and Dana. Leaving Shayna high and dry to eat another pin. Of course later. Shayna issued an ultimatum. To Nia. Better get it together or else. I think Shayna should just quit. She's been eating pen after 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 pen um yeah uh we had a Miz TV segment had the Miz Maurice on there they were going to celebrate Damian Priest came out Challenged the Miz, got champagne thrown in his face. Yeah. Elias finally got a victory. Beat Kofi Kingston. Something we hadn't seen in a while. Something we haven't seen in a while. An Elias victory. I can dig it. I can definitely dig it. The New Day have kind of had his number for a while. So, hey. I can dig it. Um, and of course, we had uh, a, another um, Alexa Bliss promo. 
talking about Lily and how she helped her when she was a kid and just yeah I, I, I still don't really know how that's gonna go but whatever she's probably gonna be doing promos for week after week and probably won't see her in the ring again anytime soon um so Drew McIntyre had a two-on-one handicap match him against Mason T-Bar of course um it ended in a disqualification because both Mace and T-Bar attacked Drew at the same time and whatnot. Then Braun Strowman showed up. <laughs> so this turned into a tag team match. And then even that went to a disqualification because Mace and T-Bar's uh, masks were removed. <laughs> oh my goodness, y'all! We, we can't, we can't make this stuff up. We can't make this stuff up. Two back-to-back -back disqualification matches. That, or two back-to-back -back matches that ended in disqualification. That's that's funny. Oh, uh, that's that's yeah, yeah. Uh, Damian Priest and the Miz had their match. Damian Priest got the victory. Um, Miz tried to get that cheap feet on the ropes pin again. It didn't work. Damien gets the last laugh of the night. Um, Sheamus held an open challenge for the United States title, and Humberto Carrillo got his few minutes of fame, but got beat down before the bell. Therefore, this whole thing was thrown out. So Humberto got his what three three or so minutes of fame, suffering a beatdown at the hands of Sheamus. Well, at least it was good to see him again. I guess. Yeah. Uh and then the main event. <laughs> the main event. Asuka vs. Charlotte, with Rhea Ripley watching. It was back and forth. Charlotte had Asuka in the figure eight. Rhea got up and pulled Charlotte's arms. And then Asuka took advantage and got the, the pin, the quick roll up for the pin. And Charlotte got so mad and ended up going stone cold on the referee and beat up the referee. She just laid into the referee with repeated forearms, just almost nonstop. Other refs tried to break it up. She would leave the ring and come back in. More, more beat down. More beat down. Leave the ring, get back in more beat down on that ref. And it has been announced uh, on Raw Talk that due to that beat down from Charlotte onto that ref, Charlotte has been suspended indefinitely and fined $100,000. Let's be let's be let's be honest with each other. You got WrestleMania backlash coming up. It's this is most likely going to turn into a triple threat for the Raw Women's title. Rhea Ripley defending against Charlotte and Asuka. She might be suspended, but it ain't gonna last that long. I highly doubt it's gonna last that long. This is Charlotte we're talking about. Vince's golden blonde bombshell. 
I, I highly doubt the suspension will last that long. You got uh, WrestleMania Backlash, which I believe is May the 14th, I think. May the 14th or 15th. One of the two. But yeah, I highly doubt this This is going to last. The suspension is going to last. So, but we'll see. We'll see. Uh, going into NXT, um, Kyle O'Reilly coming out with some swagger. Dude, got the shades on, the, the hat, got the, the, the jean jacket. Out, coming out with some swagger. I'm like, this can't be the violent artist. But nah, this is Kyle O'Reilly coming out looking cool and everything like that. Ended up calling out uh, Karrion Cross. So... I think that's that's definitely a match I look forward to. Karrion Cross versus Kyle O'Reilly. That should be really good. And of course, Cameron Grimes tried to come out and endorse a partnership with Kyle O'Reilly. He was gonna pay him and you know be his financial man. But he got a he got a right hook for his troubles. And a match scheduled for later on, which I believe uh oh yeah ended up being the main event. So we got a Cameron Grimes versus Kyle O'Reilly match later that night. Um, we had L.A. Knight going up against uh, Dexter Loomis. And uh, Dexter Loomis suffered a rare pinfall loss. But, of course, Indy Hartwell had a lot to do with that as these two are continuing to show that they're mesmerized by each other and Indy Hartwell wants that kiss. She wants that kiss. She is not going to stop until she gets that kiss. She wants that kiss. She wants that kiss. She she's going to leave the way to get that kiss from Dexter Loomis. So <laughs> the way ended up prying her away from Dexter Loomis again, but she, you know she gonna keep trying. Indy Hartwell wants that kiss. That that woman is in heat for some Dexter Loomis. She want that kiss. She ain't gonna stop until she get that kiss. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Grizzled Young Veterans fought and defeated Brizongo. Not surprised. Um... You know, trying to get work their way back up into the um, title picture to get a title shot um, against MSK. Um, we got to see the Warrior of the Sun, Saray, debut against Zoe Stark. Now, I know Zoe asked for this match. I just, I like Zoe Stark, and I just don't like the fact that she had to get fed to Saray. You know, Zoe Stark, she's on the up and coming, and I really would have wanted to see her, you know, get utilized and, and actually get a few more victories. But just, I feel like she's getting fed to, like, the bigger name stars. And I just, you know, she just got fed to Saray. You know, she's been fed to, to Io Shirai. And I know that she's had a victory over um Tony Storm. Don't get me wrong, but I just don't like that that Zoe had to be I would have liked if like Jesse Kamea or or Aaliyah got fed to Saray, but it was Zoe Stark. But but I mean it is what it is. I mean Zoe's still cool. She asked for this match and it was good. These ladies had a good match. That ladies definitely had a good match. And um Saray did her thing. You know, went with submissions, some little bit of high flying, some strong style, and um pretty much got the victory after like a a kind of like a cross between a T bone and a Saito suplex. And got the victory, got the pin afterwards. Um, of course, these two shook hands and embraced. 
But then uh, Tony Storm came out and attacked uh, Zoe Stark. Uh, Saray scared her off, but it looks like um, we're not done between uh, Zoe Stark and uh, Tony Storm. Because you got to remember, uh, Zoe defeated Tony Storm at the Stand and Deliver pre show. So she has a victory over Tony Storm. So, you know, she was just getting back at her for that. But congratulations to Saray on a successful debut. Um, and, you know, she's going to be gunning for that, for that title, that NXT Women's Championship. And, you know, I hope they don't push her so fast to that title shot because definitely want to see Raquel Gonzalez have a, have a good, decent title run for a bit. And, you know, she already dethroned Io Shirai, so... I don't know. Do y'all see Saray eventually being the one to dethrone Raquel? I, I, I don't see it. I, I, I don't see it. I could be wrong. Because after all, you have to remember the type of women Saray has taken on in Japan. You know, Aja Kong, Mako Satomura. I mean, she's still legit. Let's keep that in mind. But I just think it would be too early to have her dethrone Raquel Gonzalez. But we'll see what happens. We'll definitely see what happens. Uh, Kushida held an open challenge for uh, his newly won NXT Cruiserweight Championship. Oni Larkin uh, answered the challenge. Um, had a pretty good match, but Kushida got the hoverboard locked. On to Oni, made him tap out. Um, Legato del Fantasma came out to beat up on Kushida, but MSK came out to uh, back up uh, Kushida. And because of that, we're going to have a match next week. Um, Legato del Fantasma versus Kushida and MSK. So that should be great. That should be a great trios match. I'm looking forward to that. Um... You had Imperium over Everrise. Um, let's see. And then you had the main event match. Kyle O'Reilly versus Cameron Grimes. And, of course, you know I'm big on my, my North Carolinian wrestlers. So, you know, I was happy for, for Cameron Grimes being in this matchup. But um, it was back and forth as well. These, these two are great in the ring. But Kyle O'Reilly um, got the victory over um, Cameron Grimes with a top rope diving knee, which I don't know if I would stick with that for Kyle O'Reilly's solo finisher. I mean, I like him doing submission, you know. I mean, he used the Armageddon back in ROH and a couple of other uh, submissions, but... I don't know. That's just that's just my my opinion on that. But uh, Kyle O'Reilly did get the victory, and we got to remember um, on his way to this match, he kind of had a, a a moment of a stare down with Karrion Cross, the NXT champion. So um, we'll have to see how this goes, how they uh, will build up that matchup, because I'm sure that matchup is going to happen at some point. Karrion Cross and Kyle O'Reilly, and that should be great. That should be really great. That'll be a good test for Kyle O'Reilly. Um, not gonna say too much with um NXT UK, but it was fantastic to see Mustache Mountain reunite for a tag team match. Trent Seven, Tyler Bate, Mustache Mountain, former. NXT Tag Team Champions. Um, they were in the main event. They went up against Noam Dar and Shaw Samuels. And, of course, they won, as expected. Had a uh, diving knee into a burning hammer double team from Mustache Mountain for the victory. And um, I just... I love this tag team. I mean, 
I'm cool with them as single stars, but I've always been big on Mustache Mountain. I've always big on British Strong Style, you know, those two and Pete Dunne. But of course, Pete Dunne's on NXT doing his own thing. But Mustache Mountain, love them, love them. These two are great. And I do hope at some point they do finally win the NXT UK Tag Team titles. Those are tag titles they have yet to win. So I hope they eventually win those tag titles. Um, and of course, uh, of course, we had Danny Luna versus Jenny. Jenny got the victory. Um, it was really good to see uh, Jenny in action. Um, you know, definitely one of the the heel ladies on um, NXT UK that I do like, next to uh, Kaylee Ray. Um, but yeah, of course, Sam Gradwell got a big upset. Got a big upset victory over Bama Dave Mastiff. So that was that was kind of rare to see. Um, Joe Coffey got the victory over Eddie Dennis. And um, I'm sure this rivalry is going to continue with um, Eddie Dennis and Primate and T-Bone versus Gallus. I'm sure they're going to eventually have a trios match to settle things, which I believe they announced a trios match. Uh, I think for next week, if I remember correctly. So, um, yeah, that should be good. That should be really good. But, um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for NXT UK. We do know that this coming week, we are going to get the match between Aoife Valkyrie and Mako Satomura. And like I said, if Aoife gets this victory, there I have no doubt that I I really truly feel like she'll end up dethroning Kaylee Ray. If she gets past Mako, it would be so hard to not give that title to Eva Valkyrie. That title victory to Eva Valkyrie. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. We'll see how that goes. SmackDown. Uh SmackDown was interesting. I mean kind of sorta interesting. Um had Cesaro and Daniel Bryan go up against Jay Uso and Seth Rollins. I mean <laughs> Of course Cesaro and Daniel Bryan got the victory and they were taunting Roman Reigns. Daniel Bryan got on the mic, and as Cesaro kept swinging and swinging and swinging, was hoping for Roman Reigns, why don't you come down and save your cousin? You ain't going to do nothing. You're supposed to be the head of the table. Come down and save your cousin. He getting repeatedly swung around and around and around. Cesaro ain't stopping. Okay, he did stop. But then he picked him right back up and kept on swinging. So, <laughs> oh, man, that had to be humiliating for Jey Uso. Um, Nia Jax in action once again, just like on Monday, uh, against Tamina. Once again, Ada Penn. These are supposed to be your women's tag team champions, and they're eating pen after pen after pen. Last time they won was at, was at WrestleMania. But now they're just back to eating pens on Raw and SmackDown. <laughs> I mean, it's good to see Reginald's back, but still. These two keep eating pens, whether it's singles or in a tag team match. But yet, they're the women's tag team champions. So, I don't know, it's just dumb. Um, You had a pretty... Pretty decent match uh, for the Intercontinental Championship between Kevin Owens and Apollo Crews. I know Kevin Owens and Big E had a segment backstage. Um, pretty much Big E and K 
KO had a laugh about, oh, I should be the one that has the Intercontinental Championship shot. You took it from me and blah, blah, blah. Um, but yeah, this was a pretty good match. Um, but Apollo Crews was able to get the victory. Um, of course, there was the distraction from Commander Aziz, formerly Dabakato, formerly Babatunde. So he's been through three name changes. Goodness gracious. Um, Apollo Crews got the roll up for the win. Um, and you also had Sami Zayn there on commentary. Had Sami Zayn there. KO got hit with a Nigerian nail afterwards. Sami Zayn comes in and starts dancing and taunting Kevin Owens while he's down. <laughs> Which, hey, Sami, Sami Zayn's got some sweet moves. He's got some pretty sweet moves. He's quite the dancer. Quite the jokester. Part of me in my mind was just wishing that KO would just somehow have the energy to just spring up and just give Sami another stunner. But, but yeah. But, um, <laughs> Nigerian Nail, which we all know is really just the Samoan Spike that Umaga used to use. So, yeah, Nigerian Nail. We all know that's the Samoan Spike. And, and he even does it the exact same way that Umaga does it. <laughs> that's, that's the crazy thing about it. The only thing that was different was his thumb wasn't taped up. Oh, man. Um, the Mysterios went up against Alpha Academy again. But this time, the Mysterios got the victory. Um, I, I have a feeling that I think eventually, it may be a while, but eventually the Mysterios are going to become SmackDown Tag Team Champs. You know, and it'll be Dominic's first championship ever. I mean, he's a Mysterio. So, I'm pretty sure at some point, he's going to get that row. I mean, the, the, the boy is getting mad paid now. So, it's eventually going to happen. We're going to have a father-son tag team champion. So, it's just a matter of time. It's a matter of time. So, Roman Reigns returns in the last segment because Cesaro challenged him to a match for the title. Roman Reigns countered that and ended up challenging Daniel Bryan, giving Daniel Bryan one more title shot for this coming week's SmackDown. If Daniel Bryan cannot beat Roman Reigns and win the title, he pretty much has to disappear from SmackDown. Never appear. I mean, I don't know if this is like a career-ending sort of thing, but pretty much Roman Reigns don't ever want to see him again on SmackDown and, and whatnot. So, one more shot. He fell. He's done. He don't get another shot. Of course, Cesaro encouraged uh, Daniel Bryan to take that, even though he just got passed by Roman Reigns. So, yeah. Next SmackDown, Daniel Bryan versus Roman Reigns for the title. Daniel Bryan loses. He has to disappear. Yeah. So, that was SmackDown. Okay. Before I go into Impact Rebellion, I have, I have to say and address this. So, um, one of the released WWE superstars, now former WWE superstar, Mickey James had uh, tweeted, and I think she also posted on Instagram, that um, she had received her belongings and her stuff in a trash bag from WWE. And she had did a little short clip about that. And, of course, Triple H, Stephanie McMahon, Helmsley, um, issued apologies to Mickie James and pretty much said that um, 
the person, pretty much the person behind this, how this was handled, that person had been fired pretty much immediately. And all of a sudden, we get word that Mark Carano, or Serrano, I don't, I don't know if it's Carano or Serrano, pretty much the, the director, the head of um, talent relations, got fired. So it's safe to say that he's the one that was behind sending Mickey James her belongings in a trash bag. So, <laughs> but yeah, um, to be specific, uh, Mark Carano or Serrano, Y'all let me know how to say that name correctly. Um, specifically, he was the senior director of talent duration, talent relations. I had to make sure I get that right. I looked, looked it up. Senior director of talent relations. But, but yeah, apparently he's the one that got fired after this whole thing went down with Mickey James receiving her stuff in a trash bag. So, yeah, I just, I still, and it also kind of makes me believe that Mickey James to the, into the Hall of Fame probably is not going to end up happening. I don't know if she really would want to have anything to do with WWE again after that, after how she was treated and let go like that. I mean, Mickey James is a legend. Mickey James is a legend. You know, she's been she's been in the Attitude Era. She's squared off with some of the best names in, in the Mickey James, or uh, excuse me, Lita, Trish Stratus, Victoria. You know, she squared off with so many of those ladies. You know? Multiple time women's champion, divas champion. Like... She's established herself very well, especially, you know, around the world. So just the way that WWE just really did, did dissed her like this was just really messed up. And honestly, it would not surprise me if she pulled a Gail Kim and would never want to have anything to do with WWE again. It wouldn't surprise me. I mean, they already don't like her husband, Nick Aldis. So, I just, I just really messed up. And I mean, it's already bad enough. You get released from WWE and you have to go through the 90-day non-compete clause, which is stupid. But, really? Nikki James? And then you send her her belongings in a trash bag? Come on now. Come on, that's just, that's just not how you do things. That's not how you do things. Anyway, let me preview the card for Impact Rebellion to, to finish off this pro wrestling talk. Um, first off, uh, I'm just going through the bottom here. Um, we're going to see the Impact Knockout Tag Team titles on the line as Fire and Flava made up of Tasha Steeles and uh, Kira Hogan, going up against Jordan Grace and a returning Rachel Ellering. Wow. I'm actually really excited for this. Rachel Ellering, when I last heard, last time I saw her, she was on AEW Dark, and then she got injured. She, she suffered a pretty bad injury. And then we didn't see her again for a long while, which, you know, she never really got signed to AEW. But, you know, Rachel Ellering had been dealing with injury for so long, and I'm just really happy to see her back here on Impact. And she looks great. She looks great. So her and Jordan Grace teaming up, and this should be an interesting team. Should be an interesting team. Um, But, yeah. Looking forward to this tag team match, and 
It's good to see Rachel Ellering back, the daughter of Paul Ellering. Okay, we got a big, um, we got an eight-man tag. We got Violent by Design going up against James Storm, Chris Saban, Eddie Edwards, and Willie Mack. Uh, so that should be interesting. Should be chaotic. Um, but yeah, definitely, this should be an intriguing uh, eight-man tag. But uh, we'll see what happens. Although, I really miss Alex Shelley. I really hope he comes back soon so the Motor City Machine Guns can go back to doing what they do best. We got a last man standing match between Sammy Callahan and Trey Miguel. Um, honestly, Sammy Callahan probably will win this. I mean, Sammy Callahan's known for these type of matches and the, you know, the hardcore matches and stuff like that. Sammy Callahan probably is going to win this, but yeah. Um, we got a singles match between Brian Myers and Matt Cardona. Former best friends. Former tag team partners have been tag team champions back in WWE. Um, and it's no surprise to see these two go against each other here on Impact Wrestling. So... This ought to be interesting. This ought to be really interesting. You know, these two know each other very well. So, yeah, I'm liking this. I'm definitely liking this. So, uh, <laughs> we'll see how this goes. Um, it's hard, it's hard for me to pick one. It's hard for me to pick one. We got ourselves a, a triple threat for the X Division title as Ace Austin, the champion, Defends against Josh Alexander and TJP. So, um, this should be good. Uh, I was hoping this would be an Ultimate X match. This would have been nice if it was an Ultimate X match. But, it's a triple threat. And, I'm pretty sure Ace Austin is probably going to retain. But, we'll see. We'll see what happens. But, I'm pretty, pretty sure he's, he's going to retain. Uh, we got the Knockouts title on the line as the champion, the Virtuosa, Deanna Perrazzo, defends against Tennille Dashwood. Um, and as much as I like Tennille Dashwood, I don't think she'll, she'll dethrone the Virtuosa. But it should be good. It should definitely be good. Tennille Dashwood's a good wrestler. These two ladies, I hope they tear the, tear the roof off the place. I think this will be a good match. And, um... You know, of course, Deanna Perrazzo recently ended the career of Jazz. Uh, so Jazz recently retired. So, I mean, this should be good. This should be really good. We got the Impact Tag Team titles on the line as the Good Brothers get their rematch against the team that dethroned them for the titles, Finn Juice, Dave Finley, and Juice Robinson. So this should be really good. Um, looking forward to, to seeing this uh, rematch. I didn't get a chance to see their first match. But um, definitely looking forward to seeing this match. Um, this should be good. Should be really good. But I think they'll probably still retain. I think they'll still retain. Unless, I don't know. You never know. I mean... They could win, and then the, the Elite, all of the Elite, would have championships. Kenny Omega with the AEW World Championship, Young Bucks with the AEW Tag Team Titles, and the Good Brothers with the Impact Tag Team Titles. I mean, they could pull that trigger, and it would not surprise me that much, but I don't think it's going to happen. And then we have our main event, which it has been announced that former... NXT commentator Mauro Ranallo will be doing will be calling the play-by-play -play for this match. So that's exciting. And I can't wait to see him 
back at the commentary table. I thought he did an amazing, excellent job back in NXT. And I don't think he'll do any less in this matchup. Main event, title versus title. The Impact World Champion Rich Swan will take on the AEW World Champion Kenny Omega. Um, a lot of tensions rising between these two. I mean, Rich got slapped during the press conference and a brawl broke out. And of course, we have to remember Kenny Omega got the pin on Rich Swan um, from the trios match they had. It was uh, Omega and the Good Brothers versus Rich Swan, Chris Saban, and Moose. It was supposed to be Rich Swan and the Motor City Machine Guns, but Alex Shelley was out. But um, which I really do hope to see the Motor City Motor City Machine Guns. Uh, return at some point and go at it with the Good Brothers since, you know, it's been a while. It's been a while. Um, Who's going to win this? I mean, you know Don Callis is going to be there. He's got tricks up his sleeve. But, I mean, we'll see what happens. It's easy to say Kenny Omega would most likely win, but I'm expecting some sort of surprise. But we'll see. We'll see how that goes. It should be a great match, though. should be a great match. But that is your Impact Rebellion, Impact Wrestling Rebellion uh, pay-per-view card. Um, and like I said, it's tomorrow um, at 8 p.m. Looking forward to it. I've got it ordered. Going to watch it with my dad. Should be good. Should be really good. But that'll do it for uh, the Pro Wrestling Podcast. And, um, yeah, talked a good bit today, and I definitely enjoy it. I love having these uh, pro, pro Wrestling Talks and just sharing with everybody. And like I said, let me know what y'all think about uh, a lot of these things going on. What are y'all looking forward to? Uh, were y'all happy with the turnout? of the New Japan USA Cup. Um, Y'all happy with Tom Lawler as the new strong open weight champion? Um, what do y'all think about how they treated Mickey James with sending her belongings in a trash bag? Um, and yeah, let me know what y'all think. Uh, Y'all looking forward to Impact Rebellion? Um, let me know. Like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you don't miss a video. And thank you so much for watching. This is Blitzball Champ signing off with another pro wrestling talk. Hope everybody has a blessed weekend, and I will see y'all soon. Take care.